is a very, very special bonus episode of In Defense of Ska. Behind the curtain. Yeah, or is this yeah. one behind the curtain or is this one out in the open? Oh, this is behind the curtain, but we are not yet behind the curtain. We are, we're talking out in the open, but uh, the, this, we're only going to be out in, the, in front of the curtain for just a few minutes. Just a little bit here, just to give you an <laughs> idea of what's about to happen. Yes. Then you can decide if you want to hop in and do this with us. Yes. Um, Adam, uh, have you ever seen the film Dance Craze? Nope. Never right. seen it. Okay. Have you I seen have the seen, film Dance Craze? I have seen, not only have I seen it, but I've interviewed um, the cinematographer who, uh, I can give you a little brief history. Um, cinematographer actually made the movie. Uh, I, and I did a whole bunch of stuff in my book. So I know a lot about the movie. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a real brief like breakdown of the movie. So two-tone, all the two-tone bands, Specials, Madness, um, The Selector, The Body Snatchers, um, English Beat, and Ma- Bad Manners. Bad Manners technically never had any relationship with um, two-tone records. Mm-hmm. So they're sort of like two-tone in spirit, or this movie makes them two-tone. But... So those bands had already put out their first records. You know, they had all had had hit singles and everything. And so I think, I think timing wise, this is recorded in between their first and second records. So this is like prime time for these bands. Mm -hmm. They're just on fire. They're so good. Um, They're still like playing ska because some of these bands kind of, a lot of them drift off into other stuff, which is fine. It's great. Um, and this movie, by the time this movie's released, 81, two-tone ska sort of kind of passed its, past it. it's kind of, we're kind of past the craze in England. Mm-hmm. So the movie doesn't really, the movie feels a little bit like an afterthought in terms of how it plays in England. Everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, we know that, right. that they already moved on to something else basically. Um but Dance Craze ends up having a much more important role in U.S. and the and the spreading of U.S. ska because these bands have broken up or have moved on to doing other stuff. And so kids in the U.S. that are starting to hear about ska, starting to hear about Two-Tone, it's like, oh, I can't wait to see the specials. Oh, specials are broken up. Guess I'll never see the specials. Um, <laughs> so seeing Dance Craze ends up being... The, the next best thing basically. And, um, you know, it'd be like midnight movie showings. Um, the theaters would be just, um, packed with kids dancing their asses off going crazy. Like it was a, like they were seeing these bands. That's how they treated seeing dance craze right. in the eighties. Yeah. So I heard that people were like dancing in the theaters, right? Dancing in the theaters, dancing on their seats, dance. Um, Eric Din from the band Uptones, when he t- told me about seeing Dance Craze, he was talking about the kids uh, at the UC Berkeley Theater were on top of the stage, like in front of the theater dancing. <laughs> Doing backflips. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, so its role in, in, de- in the development of U.S. Ska was pretty significant. Another couple of just interesting factoids about the film, and then we'll move on to uh, watching it, is that um, the movie is credited to a guy named Joe Masso, Joe Massot. And um, he did, you know, envision the idea. Originally, he wanted to do a documentary about madness. He was, um, he had made a documentary on Led Zeppelin. I think it was The Song Remains the Same. And, um, wanted to do this madness documentary. He ended up realizing that madness were a part of a scene. So he ended up kind of envisioning capturing all these bands. Um, he talked to, uh, God, what's his name? The cinematographer, Joe, God, I'm, Joe Dutton. There you go. He was an, he, you know, he really knew how to do steady cam. Steady cams weren't like a thing everyone knew how to do. Um, they took this like they took this technology, kind of old technology that was not really being used anymore. That basically gave it a really big, big look, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I talked to I talked to our friend AJ about it. He was telling me he kind of described it. It's like um, 
anyways, I, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I kind of get that it's, it's, it, it's, it's purpose is to make it look really big and really dramatic. So this technology hadn't been used in, in a number of years. I think Dance Craze is like credited for bringing this certain kind of um, film back. And also like the ways the steady cams were used was also important. So Joe Masson was like, it sounds like he was a difficult figure. And um, it sounds like he got kicked off the film pretty early on. And uh, Joe Dutton sort of took over. But he he never accepted role as director. I think he liked Joe Massot and didn't really want to, didn't want to like, you know, burn him, I guess. He still wanted to give him credit because he was his friend. Right. Um, however, you know, the story goes on with Joe Massot is that in uh, like the early 90s, he shows up in New York. Uh, there's a pretty solid New York ska scene happening with the toasters and New York citizens and, and all those bands. And he's like, Hey, I'm the director of dance craze and I'm going to make the sequel to dance craze. It's going to all be, it's going to be all about New York. And he, you know, they all put the show together and uh, bucket, I think was probably his main connect, you know, connection on that. And, um, they got everything ready. Um, and he just like flaked. He just didn't show up. So they just had a show. They, they recorded an audio version of it and, 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 uh, they released it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's called NYC ska live is the recording. So it's like a bunch of all the, the cream of the crop of New York bands. So that's, I think that story like kind of confirms that maybe he wasn't really, (laughs) you know, wasn't really the guy behind dance craze the way he gets uh, said to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting history that's in my book that I uh, felt like more people would be interested in, but I haven't really, I don't know. Didn't feel like people were really like, Oh my God, I can't believe all this history about how the director was kicked off and the, the cinematographer took over <laughs> to me. I was like, I was like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> And then the and then the director came back to New York and flaked on making a New York sequel. Did he ever surface again after that? Uh, he died not too long after that, so they killed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't fuck ska with the New, New York ska, right? Yep. <laughs> All right, so we're going behind the curtain now because we are about to get into this film. So, We're about to start it. So when if you're say, with us, yeah, you want to get that link and together so we're going to push the yeah. button. It's in the show notes, the link. Yeah. And now hover over that play button and we'll go three, two, one, click it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in for this exclusive peek behind the curtain. If you want to hear this whole conversation, head over to our Patreon, the Indefensive Scott Patreon. Listen, for only $5 a month, you'll get to hear this episode and tons of other episodes. You'll be supporting a podcast that you love. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. We'll leave you by saying, Ska now. the uh, In Defense of Ska Patreon. So head over there and sign up for it, okay? Uh, I'm going to stay here. You keep going. I'll talk to you soon, okay?